Corsair's new LL series hydraulic bearing fans feature excellent airflow, quiet operation, and powerful lighting with 16 independent RGB LEDs across two separate loops. Available in 120 and 140 millimeter sizes and controlled by Corsair's Lighting Node Pro, LL series fans can give your system a distinct and customizable look. Click the link in the description for more information. What's up guys, how's it going and welcome back to Paul's Hardware. Today I am doing my monthly builds video for October 2017 and I am super late this month. It's like October 20th right now. Usually I do this at the beginning of every month and then I build one of the systems that I part out in my builds video later in the month. Uh, last month I came through, I actually built the mini ITX system that I promised you guys I would build. But for today, if you were coming to this video expecting me to actually build something, check out my builds playlist because there are many builds on it, uh, some more recent, some I'm a little bit older, but all of the builds that I do in my monthly build series are based on your feedback. So I have a straw poll linked down in this video's description about what you guys want to see for November. Uh, we had some requests for a Super Tower Max Overkill build for this month, which I'll get to in just a minute. But I have a few other options on there, for instance, a budget Core i3 Coffee Lake, uh, maybe something with the AMD's new Ryzen APU. I'm not sure if that's actually going to be out yet, or maybe just a simple $800 uh, gaming PC. For October, for this month, you guys all voted last month, and the number one request was a scary computer for Halloween. Uh, also second, and just uh, uh, just a percentage point behind, or not even this percentage point behind, was a super tower build, a max overkill PC. So what I actually did for this month was, I have a super tower build that's the scariest computer that I've ever assembled. And uh, we'll get to that in just a second. But I actually have three builds total this month, partially because one of them is sort of a rehash of one of last month's build, and I will be putting that one together. That is a Threadripper entry-level build. Now when I say entry-level, I don't mean like entry-level PC, I mean entry-level Threadripper, which is to say if you've decided that you have a need for a high-end workstation PC, and you've decided that you want to invest in Threadripper, which is AMD's high-end desktop platform with uh, X399 motherboards, how much do you need to spend to build a system that is reasonable surrounding those parts, considering that the CPUs on this platform cost $600 to $1,000, and the motherboards all cost upwards of $300. Then of course I'll be covering that super scary tower build that I put together, and finally a pretty sensible, in my opinion, Coffee Lake build with the 8600K just recently launched from Intel. So let's get right into it with the entry-level Threadripper Redux build, and I'm gonna try to go over this one fairly quickly since this is really similar to the system that I parted out last month. It costs about $1,800 total for the parts that I have listed here, and one of the reasons that I haven't built this yet, and that I'm excited to build it soon, is that I actually have plans for this build. I'm gonna put it together, and then Kyle and I, um, leading up to the holidays, are gonna be doing sort of a collaborative, uh, it's gonna be like an auction for the system that's gonna all be donated to charity, and we have a, uh, a live stream planned again where we're gonna be gaming. But the point is I will be putting the system together, and then um, we're not exactly sure how we're gonna do it yet. It's either gonna be an auction of the system that go gets donated to charity, or we might have people um, submit just like a basic dollar amount, like $10 per entry, and then we'll, we'll draw a winner from that. Still not 100% how we're gonna do that, but point is money goes to charity, System goes to uh, somebody who actually hopefully can use it. But all that said though, it's based on the Threadripper 1900X, which is an eight core 16 thread processor. There is competition here on the mainstream side from AMD's mainstream Ryzen platform with AM4. You can get an eight core 16 thread uh, Ryzen 7 1800X or 1700 even that has effectively the same processing power as this platform. So if you're investing here, you're probably gonna upgrade that 1900X in the future, um, but we'll come back to that. I have a liquid cooler on here from Enermax that's specifically designed for Threadripper, and I have the ASRock X399 Tai Chi motherboard, which uh, as shown last month, I actually already have here ready for the build, and I'm gonna be gathering up the rest of these parts very soon. Let's start off with the CPU though, which is of course that eight, uh, 1900X, 3.8 uh, gigahertz, eight core processor, coming in a little bit cheaper than the $600 MSRP that AMD initially said. Uh, can get it as cheap as $525 right now from Superbiz, or uh, $540 directly from uh, Amazon. Uh, so Enermax has been developing their Liquitech TR4 edition coolers. This one was recently tested specifically uh, by Gamer Nexus, Steve, and the folks over there uh, did a great job testing and showed that when you have a larger uh, actual cold plate that's making contact with your Threadripper CPU, since Threadripper CPUs have a very large heat spreader as well as four distinct 
separate Ryzen dies in there, uh, you, you get better cooling. So first off, the air coolers that have been designed specifically Threadripper, for Threadripper have been doing a really good job, but water coolers designed for Threadripper that again have that uh, the larger size cold plate are doing better if they have a larger cold plate and make better contact and everything. And I'll post a link to Steve's video in the description if you want to check that out. But a really solid cooler, it's 180, I'm sorry, $130. Um, so you can get air cooling like the uh, Noctua fan versions for about 50 bucks cheaper than that, but liquid cooling does do a better job. Uh, ASRock X399 Tai Chi, I already mentioned this one. When it comes to Threadripper motherboards, socket TR4, um, they're all pretty expensive. This ASRock X399 Tai Chi has a really wide variety of features, including triple M.2, U.2, 802.11ac, Wi-Fi, uh, and just pretty much all the basic functions and connectivity that you would you would want for a high-end workstation build. And it's $340, and still coming in at, at least according to Newegg, the cheapest amongst all of the uh, TR4 motherboards that are out there, which range from about $350 up to $550. This one's still about $340, $10 mail-in rebate available too, so um, seems like a solid entry-level Threadripper choice. Memory is horrendously overpriced right now, unfortunately, so in order to get us a quad-channel kit, 4x4 gig gigs of 16 gig memory that is at least a reasonable speed, uh, I just did a parametric filter on PC Part Picker, which is what I'm using to choose all the parts for today, by the way. Uh, going for some faster DDR4 memory speed, 3000 or above, 4x4 gig kits. Uh, G-Skill has some options there. About 175 bucks is what you're gonna spend. Uh, this one I'm not really caring too much about color or anything like that. I just want a solid kit of memory to use. It's fast enough and not, well, they're all overpriced, but not quite as overpriced. Uh, I did the same parametric filter solution for the GTX 1070 that's in this build. You can get one for less than $400 right now, so the parametric filter actually chose the, uh, that's a very tiny picture for a very tiny graphics card. It actually chose the GTX 1078 gig mini from Gigabyte, which um, is very small. Um, it is among the cheaper that are available, depending where you buy it, but you might consider something that's a larger size, maybe a little bit better cooling like the MSI GTX 1070 Armor 8 gig that's also available there for about 400. But point being, if you want a uh, solid graphics card that's in the mid-range that isn't horrendously overpriced, uh, 1070 is a good option for that. For the case, I went with the Fractal Design Meshify C. This is partially because I have this case already. It's partially because this case has really good airflow. And since there are some higher end components in here that are gonna be generating some heat, especially if you're doing rendering or that kind of thing, you want good airflow. Um, this one has it and a solid set of case options. Besides that, uh, good job by Fractal on this one. A joy to build in as well and should fit all those parts in there nice and snug, as well as having some expandability area in the future. Finally, a power supply just went with the EVGA 750 watt 80 plus gold. Uh, this is the GQ version, the 750 GQ. Uh, it does have all black uh, cabling, so that's gonna look pretty clean. You're not gonna have any ketchup and mustard nonsense in there. It's 80 plus gold rated, it's 750 watt. It's gonna provide you the juice you need for your build. Let's move on to the requested build for this month, which was the spookiest, scary build. The a, a fearsome build full of fear and hatred and to scare you guys. I'll be honest, Kyle already jumped the gun on this one. Over on Kyle's uh, soon to be defunct Bitwit Ultra channel, which um, YouTube is making him cancel, Kyle has already posted not one but two themed Halloween builds for October, which is why I didn't go directly with, with kind of what he did. He has the evil build, which is uh, sorry, I'm not subscribed to Bitwit Ultra on the account I'm logged in on right now, but it, which it appears to be a build full of cobwebs and skulls and, and candles and stuff like that. And then he also has the RGB pumpkin PC where he built a computer inside of a pumpkin. I saw this when I was over there for the live show the other day and it actually turned out pretty fun. So hopefully those will be up on his main channel soon as well so people who aren't subscribed to Bitwit Ultra can check them out. But I decided to kind of go the other way. My scary build is scary for PC builders out there. And I also have to point out there is a, there is a major flaw with my scariest PC build and that it is pretty much incompatible from the get go. Um, here's my idea. I have this motherboard. It's the Asus RRG Rampage 6 Extreme. It's basically one of the most expensive motherboards on the market right now, $650. So my thought was 
Intel has gotten a lot of flack for this platform, X299 LGA2066, and uh, some of their choices for CPUs they've implemented there. What if I were to make the scariest Skylake X system by actually using a KB Lake X CPU and just making all of the wrong and improper choices? What I have here is a system that will cost you somewhere in the range of $3,200, and as long as you can ignore the key point that my Rampage 6 Extreme super super duper high-end motherboard is incompatible with KB Lake X processors, and honestly, Asus, thank you for doing that. It's, it's completely impractical otherwise. Physically, it would fit. I was hoping it, could act, it would actually work in this, but Asus was just like, no, we're not, we're not even gonna provide support for that. But if you can look the other way for that incompatibility, here's the rest of the build. We got, at the top, the i5-7640X, one of the most hated processors of the year. It is a quad-core processor. It has no hyper-threading. It has support for dual-channel memory on a quad-channel memory platform, and Intel is still charging $220 for this. But it is LGA 20, 2066. It, it will slot into an LGA 2066 motherboard, just, just not this one I've chosen. But um, we, of course, need to cool that CPU, so I've decided since we've invested so much otherwise, we should probably get a nice budget uh, CPU cooler in there. So I just sorted by price. I did a parametric filter here, and I, there was actually a really horrendous CPU cooler in here before. It was it was very akin to like, oh yeah, it was like one of these, one of those like fake <laughs> Intel, kind of Intel stock cooler knockoffs that, that I thought might have been fun to throw in there. Uh, unfortunately, the price apparently has gone up on that, so you can get the deep cool Gamax 400 uh, this is like a Hyper 212 kind of variance, which I bet is actually a, a halfway decent cooler. And hey, for, for $15, like that's a that's a great deal right there. That'll keep our 77, 76, 4, 7640X nice and cool. Motherboard, of course, the Rampage 6 Extreme, $650 freaking dollars for this thing. But it is absolutely just decked out with, with crazy features and, and everything. So it's just sacrilege to, to even consider dropping a 7640X in here which is why Asus said, no, we're not even gonna support it on the platform, but but um, if you're willing to overlook that, let's move on to our memory configuration. We have dual channel memory support with the CPU, um, but again, gotta keep that upgrade path option available. So I went with a single stick of eight gig memory uh, from Crucial Ballistics, just the ballistics sport there. Could have gone with a single four gig stick, but you know, I can only be so cruel to you guys. For our graphics card, we of course have the uh, vaunted Radeon RX Vega 64. Uh, this is the uh, reference edition from Power Color. Only priced uh, about, eh, it's, it's somewhat reasonable. It's only about 70 to $100 over the suggested retail price for these GPUs right now. So I uh, figured grab two of those probably, drop them into uh, a Crossfire configuration. Uh, at least we can still call it Crossfire for now. And that should get you set up for graphics cards. Since this is a high-end build, of course, we gotta have lots of space uh, for future expansion. Not that we can add too much more to this motherboard since we've only got 16 PCIe lanes from the CPU, but uh, with the Cosmos 7, uh, 700P from uh, Cooler Master, recently released high-end, case. Uh, it's only about $300, uh, so it's only about a hundred, actually less than a hundred dollars more than our our CPU. And then of course, never skimp on the power supply guys. Uh, so we got the Corsair AX1500i, 1500 watt power supply here. Really, really high-end power supply. It's been kind of the, the gold standard titanium rated power supply for quite some time. Uh, and then you might have noticed that I, I didn't get into storage yet, and here was kind of my other funnest part of this of this particular build was I decided to go with some next generation storage and of course we all know that Intel's Optane uh, memory technology is pretty amazing when it comes to uh, performance read and write speeds uh, but mainly input output operations per second per second they're pretty crazy so uh, you can get them in a 32 gig capacity that's meant to act as Optane memory and be a uh, like like a cache for a hard drive, but there's nothing that stops you from just using these as SSDs. So um, we have plenty of expandability uh, on our motherboard itself. So I went with four of these. That's right, four 32 gig Intel Optane memory modules at only about $80 each. Uh, gives you for the low, low price of about $320, a 256 gig <laughs> NVMe SSD RAID array, but I did I did I'd have to point out that um, you will need a riser card since there's only three actual M.2 slots on this motherboard. So I went with a, a ghetto, a super ghetto green one uh, for just PCIe 3.0 by 4 riser card. So uh, point being, most of the system won't actually function, but 
Uh, you could get a $500 um, LJ2066 motherboard that I believe is compatible with this CPU, and then you could theoretically put all this together. You might need to pay extra money for Intel's VROC module in order to put all of your Intel Optane memory modules into an NVMe RAID array and boot off of it. So that might be an added expense, although we're still not totally sure. Intel has not been forthcoming with the prices for the VROC add-on uh, uh, dongles to enable bootable NVMe RAID arrays. So you might have to just like RAID a couple of these through the chipset and then maybe one or two uh, just directly uh, with the software RAID, but I'm sure you could get it up and running. And I mean, you got Optane on there and 256 gigs of SSD support, you're golden. All right, guys, one more bonus build since my first build was kind of a rehash and my second build was kind of impractical. Uh, let's actually follow up with the real builds that you guys, I would say, um, could, could build if you're into Intel. Now, I am not going to address the Intel versus AMD arguments here. That's not what this video is about. But if you've looked at that and you've decided that a six core Intel Coffee Lake processor is your cup of tea, if probably if you're mainly focused on gaming, then the i5-8600K can be had for $280, um, which is a pretty decent bump up over the 7600K, but you do get six cores rather than four. So that is nice and it is unlocked for overclocking. So one of the somewhat reasonable uh, CPUs that you can buy on Coffee Lake right now because it's unlocked for overclocking. So it matches up with the motherboards and everything. Anyway, this total build is gonna be somewhere between 1200 and $23, I'll say 12, I'm going to say 1250 in the actual description since, you know, uh, sometimes I count mail-in rebates and sometimes I don't. But beyond the CPU, you've got the Cooler Master Master Air Pro 4 CPU cooler available for as little as 30 bucks right now if you include a rebate. Solid uh, air cooler, you know, gets the job done kind of in the same tradition of the Hyper 212 family, but it's got a nice black plate over the top that makes it look quite a bit cleaner from uh, the visually speaking. We need a motherboard. You can get these for as cheap as like $120, $130 with Z370 chipsets, but those are pretty cut down. So I went with the Gigabyte Z370 Aorus Ultra Gaming. Uh, this is a board I've actually had some hands-on time with. And one of my requirements for this was actually that it has the USB 3.1 Gen 2 front panel uh, header on here. And this, this board does. That seems to be hard to find actually uh, with these motherboards. So take a close look if that's something that you're interested in. Of course, your case needs to have that adapter too, or check out my video on adding one of those yourself if you can find the uh, adapter cable from Lian Lee or elsewhere. Beyond that, um, you know, you, you have a solid feature set. You've got two-way GPU support. Uh, you have your SATA and your M.2 connections, two M.2 slots on this board, uh, some decent power delivery as well as cooling for that power delivery for overclocking. And of course, you got some RGB LEDs because everyone's gonna have those. Pretty solid feature set for $170 from Gigabytes. Uh, next up, we need memory. This is a 16 gig or two by eight gig kit, which is what I'd recommend for this uh, particular build. You could go with eight gigs just to get you buy if you really wanted to save some money. Found this G-Skill kit uh, new egg business for about $150, but you're probably going to spend between $150 and $170 uh, for a 16 gig, 2 by 8 gig kit right now. For storage, I've gone with a parametric filter again, and you should be able to find a 250 or 250 gig SSD for about $80 right now. Uh, bear in mind, if you're looking by price per gig, which is a good way to sort if you're on PC Part Picker and you're looking up storage, uh, $80 again is that price, and, and there's a few options down there. It does start to ramp up relatively quickly once you get uh, too far beyond that. But I do want to mention if you're sorting by price per gig and you include not just 250 gig, but also the 500 gig, SSDs. You can get a little bit better price per gig uh, options there. 525, 500 gig versions for 140 to $150 available there. But of course, then you're spending a decent amount more money. 250 gigs you should be able to get by with and uh, won't have too much issue. And you can, of course, always add storage in the future. Uh, now for a graphics card, once again, GTX 1070. It is the more reasonably priced option when it comes to high to mid mid to high range graphics cards, and you can get this one for as little as 380. Uh, follow up with the stuff I said earlier in the video about other uh, GTX 1070 options. For a case, just went with an NZXT S340 in black because it is a very solid all around case with good airflow and looks, and you can get it for about $65. Uh, of course, there's lots of cases in this price range. Um, so if you like one that looks looks different, then, then do that too. Uh, finally, power supply, EVGA 650 watt. This is again the 650 GQ. 
uh, the baby brother to the 750GQ that I talked about in the other build. And yeah, only about 72-ish dollars and also some mail and rebates available there as well. So as you can see, uh, you can part out a PC right now without going too far over budget, although there are still some ongoing issues as mentioned in my video that I posted earlier this week with uh, GPU prices in particular on the AMD side is hurting the most. Uh, and then of course those memory prices are really putting the screws to anyone who is trying to build a budget system right now. But if you wanna build, don't let that set you back. When you're talking about, say, a $1,200-ish build and you're talking about spending, you know, 60 more dollars on a memory kit, it's not that much, um, but it is something you should take a close look at and make sure that you're getting the best price that you can right now. And make sure that you're not buying memory that's like really, really low speed because you do get a little bit of extra boost from getting memory that's in the, say, 2800, 3000, maybe 3200 range when it comes to DDR4 memory speeds. But guys, that is gonna wrap it up for this video. I hope you have enjoyed it. Of course, uh, actual builds via the builds playlist in the description down below. I'm gonna be building that's uh, that X99 system very soon. And I've got lots of other videos planned coming down the pipeline too. Arctic Panther is almost done. And that's actually what I'm gonna be working on next right after I finish this. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hit the thumbs up button, of course, if you enjoyed it. And we'll see you guys next time.